All right. Welcome, everyone. I'm Tim Henning, your speaker, and I'm a Power BI developer and enthusiast. Tonight, I'll be covering the newly released Power BI project file type. This new preview feature, it's going to solve, in my opinion, what I see is some major issues related to the Power BI development and uh, source control. So if you guys need to reach out to me, here's my email address. Feel free to, to send me an email if you have any questions or want, to, want a follow-up. So let's start off with more of a, a situation, a background story that's something you guys can identify with. So you had a report, it's running just fine, and then recently some kind of change broke the report or it's running but is the performance is horrible and you're like i didn't do anything what happened but maybe your colleague did so now instead of trying to open up the report or download it and then you know pick it you know start selecting different objects and making your best educated guess of what went wrong to speed up that whole process of identifying the issue and the resolution quickly, if you have the ability to have version control, you can see a history. You can also see discrete changes. And we'll talk more about that. The other point I think and, and value that I see is really being able to take separate files and merging them together into one file and doing it safely. So to me, that is huge. Now, the feature that I'm going over is still in preview mode. But in my opinion, after working with it for a little bit and, and poking with it, it's pretty solid. All right. So why do you need version control? Again, if you need to review a history of changes, you need to look at the comments of why the changes took place, version control history will give that to you. Not only that, if you ever want to move off of a particular report or a set of development, you want other team uh, members and colleagues to take over for you, no better way to say, here's where the version history is, Go take a look. You can download the, the latest version and see and, and check out the changes. Also provides a centralized backup, so it gets it off of your local machine. I don't know about you, but with you know ransomware attacks or you know even just hardware failure, I would be super frustrated if the only version of a report was on my machine. The other thing that to think about is deployment change management process. Sometimes you're working on a report, it's better to have a second pair of eyes when you're ready to publish it, just to kind of make sure that everything is adding up as you expect, all the changes are, are in there. So you can have a change management process. And I'll, I'll give you some ideas later on in the presentation how that might look. The last two I think are really important. Right now, if you're working with uh, PBIX files and you wanna share development, it's not really possible. You have to wait for someone to check their work in so that you can then check, check out the, the report and do your work, especially for single file solutions where the report and data set are all in one file. If you're lucky, you may have the uh, data set broken out to a separate file where someone can work on the visualizations and then someone can work on the data model separately. But then that might not be all the, the same case. This may be a larger type of report project and you may have multiple people trying to work on the model. Maybe they wanna update two different measures. But they can't if, it, if it's all in one, one file. So we'll talk about how this is going to be very, very beneficial. All right. So Power BI version control requirements. When you're thinking about version control, you really need to think about 
the total report solution. It's not just about the visuals or the, the, the Power BI data set. You really need to think about the serving layer, the apps, the dashboards, the data flows. All of that is what is going to serve up the reports to your end users. And they don't care if, well, my visuals and models, my Power BI models are just fine. The, the serving layer is what blew up. They don't care. All they see is the big red X on the screen and they don't have their reports. So this is a lot to consume in, in one presentation. So I'm gonna be focusing on the visuals and the data set models. But in future presentations, we're gonna cover some of these other areas. Now, previously, when I was looking at articles and look at videos from other developers in the community, whenever you mention any kind of Git uh, control, you automatically were bumped up into this premium kind of capacity license. And I'm like, oh, well, that's really expensive. With this new Power BI project file type, in my opinion, this is no longer true. You can have a, a Power BI Pro license and get that same benefit of version control. All right, so Power BI desktop files. You have, as mentioned, a PBIX file which contains both a report and a data set. Then you also have situations where you might have a shared data set where there's no target audience reports in that particular file. Then you might also have a Power BI template. So a Power BI template has the both report and the data model definition only. It does not contain any data. So if you want to take an existing report, save it as a Power BI template, you can do that. The bummer part about that is that when you want to do development, now you got to import all the data. So then you have to wait for it. And if, it's, if you're dealing with a lot of data, it's going to take some time for it to kind of hydrate and, and have some data to work with. So keep that in mind. Not exactly ideal. So Power BI version control options. These are what have been proposed in the community by multiple uh, uh, community leaders. And there's lots of articles out there. So I'm kind of condensing down you know, some of the options that I've read and actually used. So you can save your PBIX uh, file or your template file to SharePoint or OneDrive. Now I'm gonna say SharePoint because in my opinion, that gives you a little bit of a, uh, a better feature because not only can you get version control of your file, but you can actually add a comment. You can say, on this date and time, I updated you know, this, this part of the report, right? So it's nice, it gives you nice version history comments. And you don't really need to have knowledge of get commands. I don't need to know how to add files and ignore files and, and do all of that. Now, for those of you that are more comfortable with Git, again, when you're dealing with Power BI file, um, version control previously, you had to save the, the PBIX file, right? And as it starts to get beyond certain file size thresholds, now you had to enable large file format in Git. And if you were saving multiple versions up there, your Git repository. I got a circle full of scammers, not rap friends. He posting with that pistol back. <laughs> tell the junkies about the packs in. I heard Uncle Finn, no, tell her come tap in. Come on. I'm well protected. I use socks five. Everybody. Are you guys still there? Yes, we are. Yeah, thanks for popping and muting them. Wow, that was different. Yeah. Ginger, was that one of your friends? Yeah, that's it. I've heard of this happening. Now. This is the first time I've experienced it. All right. So, um, 
where were we where did we leave off so we talked about git legacy binary files large for, file format oh so one of the downsides of saving a binary file to any kind of version control especially git one of the benefits of git is being able to see your discrete changes where you could see okay they made a, uh, an update to this visualization, they changed the sort, and they added this measure and made these, these changes. Well, what happens if you save a, a PBX file? You don't know. You, it's just one big blob up there, right? So that was kind of a, in my opinion, a big downside. Now, there are people out there that said, okay, I know what to do. I'll use my own custom scripting where I can say source control. You know, I'll, I'll be able to break out the different parts of the, the report into discrete uh, components and make them ASCII readable files. Well, the bummer part about that is, is that now you have these custom scripts that you have to maintain, right? And when you have these workflows that are not really easy to use and you're like okay fire off this powershell it's going to create these files okay move them over here save it like this okay upload the the chances of your team actually adopting that process is really low so um again it gets you what you're looking for but it's a it takes a, a lot more effort so on a side note, saving a, a PBIX file, you also run into data governance, governance risks. So you have artifacts and you have data. So if you save your both of them together into your version control and you need to remove, for example, employee social security number, birth date, you, know, uh, you have a policy that comes down that says, we need to remove this from all all files. Well, guess what? There's no way of doing that successfully. You have to go through and delete all of your previous saves, which means then you lose all of your, your version history. No more artifact history. Really, really bad. So, Skip saving the, the, the data with the report and manage the metadata. So I think uh, we all can agree that's what we want to do. We really want to focus on just the metadata for the report and the data set. We have a couple questions. Um, oh, that's Ginger. Okay. So We've been in the already, we have the ability using external tools to save uh, metadata into to discrete uh, text files. And one of them is tabular editor. So if, if we go and open this up, I'm just gonna open up a test project here. So for those of you that are not familiar with Tabular Editor, it's an external tool that allows you to see the different parts of the data model. For example, here are my, my tables, right? And I can also look at my measure code. So if I wanted to, I could actually save this as a BIM file, and that'll take all of those different object uh, model objects and save them out to a, a text file or it can actually even save it to a folder and it will then break down all the tables all the measures so that's handy but the problem is is that's only half a solution 
What about the report definition? How do we fix that? Well, if you actually look at a Power BI template file, it actually has not only the, the data set, let me see here. So I basically have taken a, I saved my PBX file as a, as a template file and I've extracted the zip and lo and behold, here is all the different parts of that particular report minus the data. So I can come here and there it is. Here is my, my model. Does it look pretty familiar? And if I wanna look at, for example, the report, here's the layout of the report. See, that's super clear. So here, I've just formatted it. But now you can see the different uh, visualizations. You can see um, the calls to, to the uh, JPEGs, right? All the different measures. And then if you want it, you can see all the different uh, static resources like the images. So you get both the data set and the report artifacts. But the, the, the downside is, is that now you got to convert your, your PBX file to a Power BI template. You've got to rename it. You've got to extract it. There's no development data to start dev with because if we're doing using a template file and you have a large data set or a slow connection, you're going to be there a while. And that's going to be really painful if you have to start your day like that every time. So saving a PBX file to SharePoint, it's good. It's not great as a short-term solution. And if you need to be able to uh, review both your, your report and your, your data set in discrete changes, that's definitely a requirement, right? That's, you, need to, is, you need to see both. Now, one of the things that I didn't really think about, but this has come up occasionally, is that how do I merge changes from different files? Sometimes you may be working on a file, it's a very complex report, you got it working in, in one portion of it, and you're like, oh, I'll just create a copy of it because I don't want to mess up what I have. And then you accidentally make changes in the copy, but then you're like, well, how do I merge those back? Or maybe you have another team member that says, you know what? Hey, I took the liberty of fixing the bugs on this separate file, and you're like, well, I checked it out. So now you have that need of being able to merge changes. And how exactly do you do that? So Let's talk about that. All right. Uh, we talked about that. Introducing the project file type. So you can take any PBIX file. Let me close this down. You can take any PBX file. Open it up. And then wait 10 minutes for it to open. Hit save as. And then save it as, as a Power, Power BI project file type. And what do you get when that happens? Lo and behold, you get both the report and the data set. Let's go through some of the, the different file types. So this is the shortcut that it provides to you. So you can actually click on this and it'll open up right within Power BI desktop. Oops. So 
So if we look at this, interesting enough, that shortcut is pointing to another shortcut. It's pointing to a folder called debugging visualizations.report. Let's take a look in there. Hey, there it is. And then there's another file in here called definition PBIR. Let's take a look at that. Interesting enough, it is yet another shortcut, but this time it's pointing to a data set. So it's interesting that what they've done is given you the ability, if you really wanted to, you could change this report file to point to a different data set if you wanted to. Hopefully that gets your, your wheels spinning. And again, so we have our report JSON. This shows you all the different visualizations, all the configurations for the visualizations, the, the measures that they're, they're using in different columns. And then here is our data set definition. Now it doesn't have a shortcut, but what it does have, which is interesting, is a BIM file. Remember that? The BIM file has the, all the data set model definitions. Let me change the language here. One moment. So here you can see all the different roles that are in there. You can see uh, the power query uh, um, queries in there, the, the relationship, the hierarchies, all of that. It's all in there. The best part of this is, so you have everything broken out separately. You have your report, your data set, your images, everything that makes up uh, your Power BI report. And it's all in ASCII readable format. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, what's the big deal about images? If you need a, images are just like any other kind of artifact. You want to make sure you have the the right image. Sometimes the clients or your users will have you get give you different images. You want to make sure you have the right one. All right, I think we covered this. So how do you enable this? So it is a preview feature. You're going to want to use the, a recent Power BI um, desktop version. And all you got to do is go to File, Options, under Preview. And you, just, you select this check mark and hit OK and then it becomes available to you. So we talked about uh, saving uh, a PBX file to a project uh, type if you want. One of the things that's really important is to also update, it includes a git ignore file. And for those of you that are not familiar with git ignore, this is really important. So if, this particular folder is under Git control. What's going to happen is when I add the files in, guess what it's going to do? It's going to grab my PBX file and also upload, a, upload that as well, totally defeating the purpose of what I'm trying to do. How do I prevent that? What I can do is update the git ignore file to ignore all PBX files. And so therefore, when, when I am managing this report, the only thing it's, it's managing are these three, this file and these two folders. All right, so let's walk through an actual demo here. So we're gonna go over here, we're gonna go to a repository. Let's start fresh.
we'll create Power BI version control two. That's available. We'll add a README file. Why not? We'll create my repository. Now I'm going to grab this uh, this new um, URL for my repository. I'm going to come over here to my Visual Studio Code, and now I'm going to clone this repository. So I just paste that in, and I'm going to select this clone from URL. Now it's going to ask me, well, where do you want this? I'm going to navigate to our, our folder here. So uh, I'm going to say Power BI version control, and I'm going to select this as the repository destination. And it says, hey, do you want to open the clone repository? Yes. Nope. All right. Now it's it sent me over to this new folder. So if I look in this folder here, I have two, two folders here under the Power BI project uh, folder. In this one, I have just the readme file and my Git folder. So why don't I take these files, I'm going to copy them, paste them in here. Now if I go back to my Visual Studio Code, notice that these show up in green. That means that these need to be added and controlled in, in Git, because right now Git doesn't know this. So if I was to come here and let's see. See, it says, hey, these will not be committed because they're not part of your current uh, Git project. So there's a real easy way to add them. And come over here and say, stage my changes. Wait, did I add them? Stash, no. May have skipped a step here. Nope. Okay. It did it for me. Normally, I, I use the command line. I, I don't use, really use the Visual Studio Code uh, UI, but I'm going through this for those of you who may not be comfortable with the Git commands. So what you see here is that now I have all of my files. See, it has an A next to it. These It's been added. This file has been added and ready to go. Notice that my Power BI PBX file has been dimmed out. So if, if, we're, if we're lucky, what will happen is that this will not be included and saved to the server. All right. So uh, let's type a message in here. My initial commit. We'll go ahead and, and sync our changes. Now we're going to push our changes to the server. And there you have it. Here are all our files. We've just now taken our PBIX file, we saved it as a project file, and all of those discrete files are now saved in Git, along with our images. Pretty cool. So we've created a repo, we've cloned the repo, 
we've added the files to the repo and now we've now pushed it back to um get all right so now you can make edits you now you can make edits in the and this is something that everyone should be aware of you can make edits within project files let me see if i'm on the right one let's open this up all right so let's open this up for for giggles here this is really really important all right so while power bi project files are very useful um unfortunately is somebody yeah. there you go you cannot publish from a, a power bi project file to the power bi service so while you can make your updates in here you won't be able to publish them to the service. So in my opinion, uh, it's best to actually you do your development in your PBX file and then save them as a project file. So now the other, the other thing to keep in mind is um, when this initially came out, if you made changes to the model outside of the project file, it would not be reflected back in the project file. I've tested it recently and I've made changes to a DAX uh, measure or a measure's DAX code, and they were reflected back into the project file. So maybe certain other types of changes won't be reflected. Um, all right, so we staged, commit, and pushed. We reviewed the, the change in the repository. We talked about the current limitations. So this is essentially your workflow. Now, this workflow may change when this finally goes GA, but for now, this is what I believe is probably the best way to handle it is you do your work in a PBX file, you save it as a project file. So, um, come here open this up so i'm going to change the sword on this i'm going to come in here and i'm going to my new comment and say that so now i'm going to come here i'm going to do a save as so i've i've tested this really thoroughly i've uh, posted this to our dev uh, workspace and it works great now i'm going to i'm in my version control 2 folder I'm going to say this is to say, do you want to replace this? I'm going to say yes. So now if I look back here, four files have changed. Let's take a look. Looks like the data set ID has changed. And I forgot the actual reason, but I, I came across this that your model uh, version will change. And I'll have to look up the specific reason why, but for now, this is just a minor thing. As you can see, there's not really very much else that changes. The biggest change here that you can see is that in the report. So I can come down here, you can see that the, the sorting has changed. I can scroll over here. 
You can see now it's sorting on the category instead of date. So these are can be really important uh, factors when you're trying to debug a performance issue or figure out what changes are made. So now I can come here and I can say, go ahead and stage all the changes here. Um, my new changes. I'm going to commit my change. I'm going to mm -hmm. push them up to the server. And now you can see the differences. I think this is pretty cool. So now, let's say, let's see if we can mimic somebody, um, another developer making changes. And let's make it in the report file. I'm going to go to report JSON. I'm going to edit. Um, what do we find? Let's call it display name. We'll say two. Check relationships. We'll walk that to two. We're going to commit our changes. Some other developers changes. We'll commit. All right. So now our local machine is behind the server because somebody else checked out the files, checked them back in, made some changes. Normally, that would be a, a really big problem. So how do we fix that? So now what we can do is say, get pull. And now you can see the changes from the server have been brought down locally. How do I know that they, they actually made it here? So if I open up the project file, Lo and behold, our page uh, names have changed. These used to say data set and data and check relationships. Now you can see that they've been changed to two. So we just now merged the changes locally. Now, if I want to start doing development, all I have to do is save back to a PBIX file. Do I want to replace it? Yes, I do. And now I can open this up and do my development work. So I just now have shown you how two different files, two different team members can interact, make changes. You can see the minor discrete changes that are made. And I've shown you that you've merged them and now can start doing development back on your local machine without having a fear of, of corruption. So this is basically what we've done. We've basically said, hey, go pull the changes from get, save it back, you know, merge it to your, your Power BI project files, save it back to a PBIX file. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with get, my recommendation is that you can just, if you're using Azure DevOps, you can uh, create a different branch off of, instead of using main, you can come here and say, hey, I have you know, this story. 
right? So if people are interested uh, of all the requirements and changes for this, you can create a, a branch here. And now instead of working off a of main, you have your own branch that you can work off. Once you're done with your changes, you can then issue a PR, a pull request, and then merge them back to the main branch. So that's great for if you have to do on the fly fixes, uh, you know, regarding small fixes for production while you're uh, implementing a larger feature request. Really, really helpful. And for those of you not familiar with um, how to switch off. So now you can see here are my changes in Visual Studio. And if I wanted to, I could uh, look at the different branches. And for some reason, there we go. So there's my new branch and I can switch to that branch. I can make my changes here and it's not gonna be a problem. Um, now, I've just shown you kind of a very simple type of an example. When you're thinking about how would you realistically do this with a, a larger team, and when you have hundreds of you know uh, reports and you may have 20 rep uh, workspaces, what does that look like? Do I create a, a repository for each and every report? Probably not. You know, you need to think about your needs within your environment. You know, is there a way that you can group this up together? Perhaps maybe create a folder structure that allows you to. Um, maybe show all the different reports and data sets for a particular workspace. Right now, Microsoft uh, and some of their initial um, version control attempts are, are really doing version control at the workspace level. So maybe that's a, an idea where you can create a repository for each of the uh, workspaces. Because workspaces are supposed to be kind of a, a a unit of a domain, right? It could be HR. And if there's a lot of sensitive data in there, then only the people that are supposed to work on HR reports are going to have access to that re repository. So you have that same kind of uh, security you need. You don't want to make have a, a, a situation where you have people that are not supposed to see uh, certain types of data and models and know about these reports have access. So Think about it from a, a security access uh, perspective as well, as well as working teams. Now, I did mention that Microsoft does have Git workspace integration. Um, some people have had kind of mixed reviews on it. it it's getting better. Um, right now, before you jump in and start using it, I would definitely look up, uh, you know, the parameters of how you would use it and what the limitations are for now. It's getting better and it'll always continue to get better. But for now, just make sure you uh, take a look. So if you don't have GitHub, you may come across a situation where you still need to compare two files. You don't want to upload a file just so you can compare uh, the, the differences of it. So you can, if you wanted to, compare two different versions of the same report just by saving to two different folders. So here we are, we have two different versions of the report. And what I've done is saved it as a project file because I want to see the discrete changes and differences. And so all I have to do is take these two uh, folders. I can do a comparison. And now I can see what is the difference between the two of them. And this is really what's important to me. It's like, 
okay, oh, look at this. I have a, a different visualization and, and report page for this, this version of the report. Uh, looks like I may have changed the, you know, um, the labels. So this is an interesting way of being able to look at different changes locally on your, on your machine without having to uh, upload it anywhere. So just, just a, just a thought if you need, need that capability. Um, now for those of you that say, okay, well, that, that's all fine and good. Now I'm going to automate the rest of this. So it's like a full fledged, you know, CI, CD type of pipeline. Just be aware that the Power BI API does have limitations. If you're going to try to do a custom script, um, right now, like for the rest APIs, you cannot add new reports to apps. You cannot update audiences. So you're going to have to also uh, use it in combination with PowerShell. Um, the power, the current Power BI deployment pipelines, um, I think uh, Gerhard Brook, Brickel uh, has a very interesting YouTube. You should watch this on um, Havens Consulting. Read, uh, invited him. I really enjoyed the presentation. But he said that it's not really ready for enterprise uh, as an enterprise solution. I, I totally agree. It limits you to three different work um, workspaces, and there's no rollback feature. So if something doesn't go right, or you know you get only a, half a deployment baked in there, you're going to have issues. So, in summary, um, I think the community has been waiting for this capability to save to a Power BI project format. And it's suitable, so it's suitable for source control management. And I think that the, the Power BI project file breaks it down to readable components, enough so that I could tell what has changed. And it's not just some gigantic file that says, oh, something has changed somewhere in there. Now, again, it's in preview mode. It's not perfect, but I think that it's good enough, in my opinion, to use it. So I'll now entertain some questions. Uh, Tim, I assume this is the this is going to be just the service version of Power BI, not report server. Do you know? Well, this is all happening locally. I actually haven't tested it for an on-prem report server. Is that what you're referring to? Right, there is a Power BI desktop report yeah. server uh, version. But yeah. you should realize everything is running locally off my machine. This has nothing to do with uh, Power BI service. Now, again, I, I haven't taken any kind of PBX files that I've converted from project file back to PBX and then uploaded it to um, as the uh, an on-prem, I don't mm -hmm. have access to one, but that may be something you want to try. But saving as a project file is a preview feature. It's not, I assume, even if it goes to general availability, it might not be in the report server version. I um, don't know. I, yeah, it's, so I think you're always safe working with a uh, PBX file, correct? Yes. PBX, it's, it works for both, but the project, uh, the whole point here, we're getting the actual text files when we save it as a project, right? As a Power BI project, which right now is in the preview. Correct. And, and like I mentioned, you can move back and forth between PBI, PBIX files and project files. So if you need to work with project files, the PBX files to upload to your on-prem, that's that is, that is your option. Uh, in the future, who knows what might happen on how they might advance the project file. All I can tell you right now is that we get a a, a high fidelity conversion back and forth between the two files, and it works for me so far. So. 
are you saying that even if saving as a project is not available in the report server desktop, I can use the service version of the desktop and then use that sort of uh, uh, and the two version of the, the two desktop versions are going to uh, they would want they will be able to you know function the same you know I, I wish I could uh, Andre give you a better answer I have not worked with the on-premise got it okay no no worries I was just wondering yeah I, I I mean you bring up a very good good point matter of fact if if you can get the newest version and try it out and respond back to group that, that I think that would be great sounds good yeah can you, you. can you take a take an action item for that we'll do thank yep. you any other questions anything that any shortcomings that I didn't uh, address or cover any kind of landmines that we might step on there's a question in the chat how would you go about setting this up uh, with a company that already had Git prior to the general availability? Would that be an issue? I think the spirit of that question is, you know, when you're going into an environment where they're kind of setting up the Power BI space, they already have Git, you know, but they may not necessarily have like Enterprise Edition or something like that. You know, how does that tie into, is this something that I should worry about at a later date or is this something that I should be putting a lot of time in trying to learn right now? Well, obviously you want to be consistent with whatever they're doing. And if they have all the the features that they're desiring, right? Are they saving as just one PBX file? At this point, I don't know. This is more, you know, kind of preemptive, more you know, being proactive, more so than anything. So I haven't had those conversations yet. Well, just like any other piece of software, new versions come out and you have to make that that leap from the old process to the new process, right? So it, it might be that, you know, you take the PBIX files, you convert them to project files and create a new repo. And from that point on, you archive the old repo and you start using the new one, right? Okay, I got I got a lot to learn in it, so I don't want to keep asking. But well, I think some stuff oh, I need to no, do no. So, so, if, so for example, if they already have uh, a process in place, I you know, there's there's a few different ways that people are using Git. Some of them are using Power BI deployment pipelines, and and you don't want to break that process because there's a lot already set up in that. But if they are just saving as you know the large binary files and they don't have deployment pipelines and integrations, then you may want to test it out and see if you can gain adoption within the group, right? Kind of you know, sell the features of, hey, instead of saving one big giant file, maybe we should be saving discrete uh, files so that we can compare on a, a very granular level, right? Thank you. No problem. Uh, Tim, I quickly looked up on the report server documentation. Mm -hmm. And uh, first of all, it's even if they plan this feature, it would be too early to look at because you, first they do that any, fe any features they do on the service first as a preview, then general availability. And then it might make it to the report server oh, so yeah. i quickly scanned the, through the, the documentation of the latest version uh, no no projects there right now okay that, that's good to know thank you andre i appreciate that yeah absolutely um but this is such a a big feature and a need within the community that i gotta believe it's gonna make its way down there some way somehow right and if worse comes to worse, you can save as a as a temple file, can you not? Um, yeah. And there's also, I think, PBIDs, right? You can save data source as a separate, like in case if you need to adjust the connection, right? You can do PBID. Mm. I I don't know. I, 
Uh -huh. I typically like to uh, parameterize within Power Query so that when I move it from different environments, all I got to do is change the the parameters and then it updates my connection. Yeah, no, that's that's the way to go. The, the PBID is usually for if you want to roll it out to some users that you don't want to deal with connections. Gotcha. Uh, I don't think it's common uh, use case. Okay. Any other questions or different ways of using this that I didn't think of? Well, if not, thank you so much for attending. Uh, just so you know, I, I'm thinking about, um, hold on, let me stop the recording here. One moment, please.